The North Sea, cold, gray, and bloody angry. It's a churning beast of a sea, famous for throwing some of the biggest waves on the planet. Imagine walls of water towering over 100 feet high, ready to swallow anything in their path. You'd think nothing could survive that, right? Wrong. For centuries, this treacherous sea has been a graveyard for ships. Legends whisper of monster waves appearing out of nowhere, smashing vessels to splinters. But those were the old days. Today, things are different. We build ships differently now, stronger, smarter, ready to take on the worst the North Sea can throw at them. And believe me, the North Sea throws some proper punches. Take the MS Hampton, for example. This beast of a cargo ship was sailing through a storm in the North Sea when a wave the size of a small mountain reared up in front of it. The crew braced for impact. Crash! The wave slammed into the Hampton, sending tremors through the entire ship. But the Hampton didn't even flinch. It just powered through its reinforced hull, shrugging off the impact like it was nothing. Then there's the story of the MV Durant, a container ship caught in a ferocious storm. A monster wave, one for the history books, slammed into its side. The force was unbelievable. But the Durant? It just rolled with the punch, its design allowing it to ride the wave like a surfer. How do these ships do it? It's all down to clever engineering. We're talking super strong steel alloys for the hull designed to withstand incredible forces. And it's not just brute strength. Modern ships are designed with computer simulations that analyze every possible wave impact, pressure point, and stress factor. They're built to bend, flex, and absorb the energy of these monster waves rather than fight them head on. And don't even get me started on the internal compartments. These watertight bulkheads act like safety nets. If one part of the hull gets breached, the damage is contained, preventing the ship from sinking. It's like giving the ship an internal life jacket. Section four, riding the waves, physics of survival. But it's not just about building tough ships, it's also about understanding the enemy, the waves themselves. Naval architects, those brainy folks who design ships, are like wave whisperers. They use physics and fluid dynamics to predict how waves will behave, how they break, and what forces they exert. They factor in wave height, wavelength, and even the depth of the water to create ships that can ride the waves, not be crushed by them. It's like playing a giant game of chess with the ocean. And trust me, these architects are grandmasters. They know that a ship that fights the waves is a ship that loses. The key is to work with the water, to use its energy to your advantage. Section five, triumph of resilience, unsinkable spirit. The story of modern ships in the North Sea is a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. We've gone from fearing the waves to riding them, from fragile wooden vessels to steel behemoths that laugh in the face of storms. Take the Liberian dream. This massive container ship was caught in a storm so ferocious, the waves were like something out of a horror movie. But the dream, true to its name, sailed through the maelstrom, its crew unshaken. The North Sea may be a brutal mistress, but we've learned her secrets. We've built ships that respect her power, but refuse to be cowed by it. The age of monster waves sinking ships, that's ancient history, mate. These days, it's the ships that have the last laugh. 